Welcome back, my fellow lifestyle enthusiasts. It's Lene, author of The Forever Fat Burner, and I'm back to talk about a very popular subject. In the last video, which I will link here for you and down in the description box below, I discussed my failed attempt at intermittent fasting and how I wrecked my metabolism. If you haven't seen that video, take the time to watch it so that you don't make the same metabolic mistakes that I made. In this video, I'm going to discuss the benefits of intermittent fasting, the signs to look for when it's not working, and how to do it safely. So let's talk about the benefits. It's no secret that the studies supporting the health benefits of intermittent fasting are numerous. If you aren't familiar with the benefits, let's name a few. Fasting improves metabolic function. It decreases inflammation and decelerates disease processes. It helps the body to be more readily removing toxins to age slower and it gives your body more time to rebuild and repair cells. Fasting even improves your brain function. Intermittent fasting can reduce body weight up to three to 7% and lower cholesterol by 10 to 21% in just three to 12 weeks. Now, before you get started, anytime you want to try something new, such as a new diet or exercise routine, it's always important to consult your healthcare provider and to implement some laboratory baseline markers for measuring your progress. Before you get started, I want you to determine your goals and to make sure that you have these written down. Get your starting body composition, like body fat, lean muscle mass, BMI, weight, your measurements. Some scales will do this for you. Um, you can also have your bio impedance, bioelectric impedance analysis measured, also called BIA. You can use a bod pod, you can get a DEXA scan, but you wanna monitor your body composition before, during, and after an experiment to make sure that you're not losing lean muscle mass. I want to discuss the necessary laboratory markers that will help you to accurately measure success or failure when trying a new diet or exercise program. To really do any new diet routine correctly, I recommend getting regular blood work. The key is getting the right markers tested though. Leptin is the starvation hormone that lets the body use stored fat reserves. 12 to 14 hours per day of fasting is better if you are releasing too much leptin, just so that you know. You can have your leptin levels measured in a basic serum test to determine if you have leptin resistance. Frequent glucose monitoring is essential if you're trying to figure out if your body is burning fat for fuel. I cover these tips in my book, The Forever Fat Burner. Most people like using a glucometer at home when trying to incorporate new eating patterns or foods or exercise regimens. You can use the app Zero to monitor it as well. Measure your current insulin sensitivity before, during, and after your experiment. Blood tests such as hemoglobin A1C, lipid profiles, fasting insulin, and insulin re resistance tolerance tests are helpful. HOMA IRA, all of these are really helpful to determining where you're at with your glucose. Get your estrogen and progesterone tested before, during, and after experiment, experimenting with dietary changes. A very low carb diet will drop estrogen and progesterone in most women. Fasting or eating very low carb can signal to the brain that it's in survival mode rather than in fertility and making babies mode. <laughs> Therefore, you may see hormone levels drop with extreme dietary changes. When you are fasting, the thyroid activity is lower, but it's also lower in between meals and there's often a decline in T3 or activated hormone when you're fasting. Have your TSH, 
free T4, free T3, and reverse T3 checked prior to, during, and after your experiment. Look for chronic coldness. This may mean that the thyroid's slowing down. Other signs include weight gain, hair loss, and fatigue. It's important to monitor your menstrual cycle and any changes that you see with your new dietary habits. Talk to your doctor if you see a change in length, quality of your menses, or maybe you see an increase in PMS symptoms. The old way of addressing new diets and exercise programs was simply to see if you lost weight or you felt better. I'm here to tell you that there is a much better way. I have an added bonus for you. To help you, I've outlined the key factors and signs that your body uses to tell you that your hormones are either optimized for fat burning or fat building. I have details on these signs that I call hormone indicators outlined in my book, The Forever Fat Burner. I've also created a series of videos that will help you and I'll link them for you here, also down below. The hormone indicators that I use with my patients who are trying to lose weight or maintain weight loss are digestion. So look for bloating, gas, changes in bowel habits, weight gain the next day after a change in diet from water retention, increase in cravings such as sweets, fats, or salty foods, changes in mood, not clinical symptoms of chronic depression or anxiety, but think more irritability or episodic feelings of anxiousness or feeling more sensitive. Poor workout performance, such as you can't do as much as you could last week and you're not sick. Uh, sudden changes in sleep patterns, you're sleeping less and feeling less rested. Energy level changes, uh, you have decreased energy throughout the day. These are some examples of those indicators you should look for. This is really the secret sauce for determine, determining if a fad diet or workout program is working for you or against you. Isn't that cool? Now you're empowered to figure this out on your own. After you have taken the time to get your blood work, how do you safely incorporate intermittent fasting if you're new to fasting? Well, first things first, stop eating by 7 p.m. This will automatically help you to maximize your rest and digest phase while you're sleeping and will increase the time that your body has to burn fat and to detoxify. Eat breakfast when you're hungry. If this is at 7 a.m., for example, start there. That is a 12 hour fast. Slowly work up to eating at 8 a.m. and then 9 a.m. until you're able to fast between 13 and 16 hours. If you work out, do your cardio in a fasted state in the morning. Nothing crazy though. Yoga, long walks, dancing, those are all safe. Don't make the mistake I did and overdo it. You're trying to rehabilitate your body and regulate hormone function. This is imperative for women especially. Studies show that the afternoon is the best time for HIIT training or body resistance or weight training, as this tends to be when you get a surge of growth hormone, testosterone, and insulin. Well, Congratulations. I'm so grateful that you took the time to educate yourself on perhaps a new perspective on intermittent fasting and perhaps make changes to your diet and exercise. I truly hope that you found this beneficial and if so, I want you to take a moment, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends who are interested in improving their health and leave me a comment down below and tell me if you've tried intermittent fasting and if it worked for you. Until next time, don't forget to supercharge your health and to simplify your lifestyle. Mwah.